What's up, Nerds and Geeks? My name is OMGWTF, LOL, FTW, BRB, and welcome to Subprocker Saturday. If you're not familiar with what Subprocker Saturday is, it is the one day of the week that I take any video game with really no storyline behind it, such as the game that we are playing today, even though it does have a storyline, but it also has the arcade mode, which really doesn't have a storyline. I've done these in the past, but this is the first time I'm actually pre-recording my voice, and today we're going to be playing as Mojo Jojo. Mojo Jojo, Jojo of the Powerpuff Girls, he has... Of course, you know, four different colors like everybody else. One seems like he turns into like a green. Uh, the third one, more like an orange color. And the fourth one is all black. But of course, we are sticking to the original, and we're going to be playing as his original. Mojo Jojo had just completed his master plan to destroy Townsville when he was suddenly thrust into a new dimension. Angered by the disruption, Mojo sure strived to find a way back home so that he could ex execute his evil plan. I almost said sir, but strive. Um, just like I've been doing with my Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 playthroughs, I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be guys, giving you guys some information about the character of Mojo Jojo. And our first game or match will be against Philgax when we team up with the young version Mojo of Ben Jojo Tennyson. So um, Mojo Jojo basically is, um, you know, he's the main antagonist, the main villain, you know, the arch enemy of the Powerpuff Girls. So that obviously states right there. He is from the Powerpuff Girls series. You know, he's the main villain of it. He was voiced by a man known as Roger L. Jackson. Not really well known for many things. Um, he actually has been the voice of tons of people. I mean, of course, I can't mention all of them because some people I don't even know about. The one that most, you know, I guess the most famous or most popular of voices that he's done besides Mojo Jojo was the uh, voice of Ghostface from the Scream series. You know, that's one of the horror films. Uh, one of the more pop popular... Uh, horror films out there. Uh, Mojo is a mad scientist and um, he was originally Professor Utonians which is the uh, the Powerpuff Girl's father, the man who created them at least. He was originally Professor Utonians lab assistant. He's actually the cause of the Powerpuff Girls gaining their powers due to a mistake that he made, you know, the Chemical X. It wasn't Professor Utonian that accidentally added it, it was Mojo Jojo that added it. And, um, oh, look at this. We already got our assist thing. And we are teaming up with, I believe they're called the Beetle Brothers from Ben 10. And we're just basically sniping them. And we won our first game. Thanks to the assisting of Ben Tennyson and the Beetle Brothers. Wow, now that I just think about it, that was a Ben 10 fight. The Beetle Brothers, Ben Tennyson, and Vilgax. It's pretty crazy. Our next fight will be against Hostel Gatto from the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Mojo Jojo versus Hostel Gatto. Three, two, one, fight! So more about Mojo Jojo. Um, he speaks in a conv I can't. I fuck that word. He speaks in a repetitive manner. And um, I found this interesting. I never really thought of it, but now that I think about it, he, from what I learned, he speaks in a Japanese accent, which... I'm not really sure about that. I mean, I guess he could, I guess not. Uh, he was, even though he's very highly intelligent, you know, very intelligent person. I mean, look at the, he has a brain for a huge brain that's popping out of his head. Um, he's not very good at planning schemes, it would appear like. He always fails at that. But um, there is something he's actually pretty good at, and that is being a master manipulator. And he often fools the Powerpuff Girls into believing that he has changed when... Most of the time, he really doesn't. Now, my um, excuse me, my opinions on Mojo being in this game are very high. Mojo was um, the arch enemy of the Powerpuff Girls series, and Powerpuff Girls, I believe, was the most watched show or most debuted. I mean, had the biggest viewership, I guess. I don't know what it was. Uh, biggest viewership, I'm gonna say, or most viewed. When it first debuted, and uh, even though he wasn't the first villain to appear, I believe that was Fuzzy Lumpkins. But we're going to talk more about that, because our next match will be against Mr. Um, not Mr. Adventure, uh, Flapjack and Captain Knuckles when we team up with number one. Mojo Jojo versus Flapjack versus Captain Knuckles versus number one. Three, two, one. So back on the topic of how I feel about Mojo being in this game, as I stated, I am it's very high. He was the main villain on one of Cartoon Network's biggest cartoons. And it would have been a crying shame if he didn't make it. I mean, if you're going to have the Powerpuff Girls, the first villain you usually think of 
is Mojo Jojo. I mean, he has that that voice that you know everyone remembers on Mojo Jojo, all that stuff. They remember, you know, they just remember it all. I mean, when I think of the Powerpuff Girls, honestly, the first villains I think of are the Rowdy Rough Boys, uh, him, Mojo Jojo, and Fuzzy Lumpkins. Those are the first four I think of. There's tons more out there. I mean, you had the Amoeba, Amoeba Brothers, I think they were called. Uh, I, the rich girl, I can't remember her name. I'm, I always forget it. But there was tons of villains in that series. But Mojo Jojo arguably is the biggest of them all. And he deserves to be in this game. And if he wasn't, if he was left out, it would have been a crying shame. Because there are a lot of people that are left out of this game that I will eventually go over when um, I do my final analysis on Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion. Which I'm not sure. Um, it will probably be after I'm finished with the arcade playthroughs. I'm not really entirely sure about it yet. I might do it after I'm done with the Let's Play, which I'm doing right now, Nerds and Geeks, if you are interested in tuning into that. It's, it comes every Tuesday. I believe I'm on episode 8 right now? I'm not quite sure. I had this entire series recorded, but it is now time for Mojo Jojo to drink some Chemical X, and he turns into freaking King Kong, and he looks insane, Nerds and Geeks. Very impressive, Cartoon Network. Punch Time Explosion. Very impressive. Once again, we have won, and I believe we, um, yeah, we're undefeated. I don't think we've lost yet. Our next fight will be against arguably one of my favorite cartoon characters of all time, Johnny Bravo, a guy we've actually done a playthrough of. And even though, um, back in, I, um, I did Father, Johnny Bravo, and Samurai Jack, um, I'm not gonna, t I can't really discuss about the past stuff, just like I can't really do an Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, but from here on out, uh, with Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and the Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion Arcade playthroughs, I'm gonna be talking about how I feel about them being in there and giving you guys some information about the characters. Um, yeah, but, um, more about Mojo Jojo, as we just saw Fuzzy Lumpkins, um, he was just fantastic. I mean, the first episode I honestly think of is the episode where we find out more about his uh, his past, about how he was Professor Utonium's um, assistant, how we find out that he's the original. He basically gave the Powerpuff Girls their superpowers. And he was just a phenomenal character. He was very creative. And it's... I think it was hilarious. I mean, some of the things like, you know, how he was a little, he over described himself and all this stuff. It was he was a really good character, honestly. I mean, honestly, I if you ask me, I don't think the Powerpuff Girls would have succeeded without him because he was their villain. He was the Joker to them. He was He was um the Venom to Spider-Man. He was their salt to their pepper, I guess. I don't know. What I'm basically kind of saying is, without Mojo Jojo, I honestly don't think the Powerpuff Girls would have been able to survive. But we are going to be taking on Chowder in this fight, as it has already started. And I really talked about everything I can about Mojo Jojo, really. So I don't know what else to talk about about him, but obviously he's evil. Pretty simple. And... Yeah. Mojo Jojo, everybody. He's a, a phenomenal evil villain and arguably helped create the success for one of Cartoon Network's biggest TV cartoons, whatever, you know what I mean? And it's a shame that Cartoon Network has, uh, in my opinion, kind of failed now. I mean, back in the day, they were, they were at the top of the food chain, if you ask me. I mean, I loved Cartoon Network. I was always a Cartoon Network kid and, uh, I, I've admitted it in my Cartoon Network Punch Time Explosion, and I'll admit it here. I was a male who watched the Powerpuff Girls. I really did. I mean, one of my favorite episodes was with the Rowdy Rough Boys. I mean, I think that was a lot of people's favorite episode. It was finally us males now being like, oh, look, we have we have someone to cheer for. And Mojo Jojo was phenomenal. Like, there was tons of villains in the Powerpuff Girls that were just creative, like the Amiibo Brothers, the... Professor Utonium's neighbor, I think he was? I don't know. I remember that because he's like, eat your pee, Professor, and he eats it all weird. It's a little thing on the internet. But, um, we are taking on Samurai Jack and the Scotsman. I have openly admitted that I haven't really watched many Samurai Jack. I wish I could go back and change that. But, um, we are teaming up with Hastel Gato, a guy we faced before. 
so all works out, right? Um, this game, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of hard, like, it, and when I say hard, I don't mean, like, it's difficult in a way that it gives you a challenge, but I feel like the controls are kind of broken, like, I could have maybe 10% damage on me, as you see right now, I have 56, but I could have, like, 10% damage, and Samurai Jack can, like, just hit me with one melee attack, and I'd go flying off the screen. It's very... It's a very strange game, but it's not too hard, honestly. Mo Jo Jo Jo! See, there it is. There it is. Actually, I remember my friend Joe, uh, who, if you guys, any of you tune into my wrestling series, who is, plays, he's uh, Joey Star, that's who that character's based off of. Uh, he was telling me how back in the school he was always called Mojo Jojo because of that. And uh, I don't know, it's just a little story I felt like I could share. Something um, I remember from hearing. This time we are going to be doing a uh, 2v1 match. I'm going to be playing Mojo Jojo, of course. And uh, we're taking on Dexter and Monkey. Which is always fun, I guess. It's kind of funny that we're taking on Monkey because now that I think about it, it's very interesting how Cartoon Network had a villain that was a monkey and they had a hero that was a monkey and I just I really thought that was interesting honestly I remember that actually that just happening um for some reason when I did my uh, my uh, what is it helicopter thing with his up B I went flying off the screen and <laughs> it was pretty bad I was just like what just happened when I recorded this but I think that's funny that um Cartoon Network had the the villain monkey and the hero monkey. I kind of wish that uh, something Cartoon Network would have done. Um, I'm glad that they made a game like such as Nickelodeon. They had a game from the past. Uh, me and my friend Johnny played it. Who, uh, if you do watch my wrestling program, is Ixty Midrushin, or he's uh, John Olympian in the wrestling game. But um, I forget what it's called. Nicktoon Collide. I'm not sure. But um, I am. I enjoy the fact that Cartoon Network came up with a game. That includes all their character. Well, most of their characters. I mean, there's some people missing, obviously. And um, I will talk more about that when I do my final analysis on the game once I finish either the Let's Play or the Arcade. I'm not sure which one I'm gonna do. But um, yeah. And see, that's something I believe. What the hell? Why did the screen turn all purple? Uh, but that's something I feel like Nickelodeon and Disney, in matter of fact, succeeded, and that Cartoon Network really didn't. Like, um, I remember Nickelodeon when they had a sh they had the show called, um, it was Lilo and Stitch. And we're about to do our ultimate again. You drink some Chemical X and turn into giant fucking monkey and just kill everything on the screen. Yeah. That's a pretty OP maneuver. And if you're not sure what OP is, it's overpowered, but I'm pretty positive you know that. But, um, I remember Disney Channel. When I used to watch it, I don't watch it too much now. But, um, they had a show called, it was based off Lilo and Stitch, where they hunted down all the, uh, 325, 327, I'm not sure, yeah, 325, I believe it was, because I believe, um, no, not 325, 625, because, um, Stitch was 626, I believe. I'm surprised I remember this, but Lilo and Stitch, they had, um, crossovers with so many, um, so many different cartoons like um I know I know Kim Possible was one for sure and I think they actually did um the American Dragon too I mean we're right now we're taking on uh Mac and Blue of Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends I um, don't know if I pointed that out and uh, Nickelodeon also did lots of crossovers with their television shows like for um for instance Jimmy Timmy Power Hour a phenomenal one that's actually the only one I think they did and cheese you have an earth shattering scream but, uh, yeah, that I think about it, I can't think of any other Nickelodeon crossovers. You know what, Nerds and Geeks, put that, um, I will talk about that actually in a second. Um, oh, wow, he won. See, these games go by so fast, honestly. But, um, and I don't, I can't recall Cartoon Network ever having a, a crossover thing. I know, like, you know, you've had cartoon characters make cameo appearances. Like, I remember in A Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, they had a two people who look like Ed and Ed and Eddie. But I can't remember a time Cartoon Network actually did a a crossover thing where, like, the Powerpuff Girls meet 
Dexter or Johnny. Oh wait, they did do, they did do one, but it was not probably remembered. Um, Johnny Bravo crossed over into Scooby Doo, which that was a phenomenal episode, by the way. And right now we're taking we're having the rivalry of the century. Mojo Jojo takes on the Powerpuff Girls, and we can finally see if Mojo can prevail or not. And the Vito Brothers, by the way. If you have this game and you get this assist, you know exactly what I'm talking about. This guy sucks unless you're Mojo Jojo, of course, and you get the uh, synergy thing. Because uh, they hit you. Even though you're the one that got their synergy thing, they will still they still attack you. But, um, oh, we took out Buttercup, the strongest of them. So I, that's what I want you to do for me, nerds and geeks, if you can. And anybody, if you're not, if you're not, even if you're not a nerd and geek, if you just want to comment... Um, that's what I want you guys to do. Could you guys fill me in on any Cartoon Network, Disney, or Nickelodeon crossovers? Like, I know they've done Jimmy Timmy. I know the Lilo and Stitch series have done something. And Johnny Bravo was in um, Scooby-Doo. And we just defeated the Powerpuff Girls. Mojo Jojo prevails! Mojo Jojo finally defeats the Powerpuff Girls. And Nerds and Geeks, it is now finally time for us to face the main villain for the arcade. Powerpuff Girl Villain meets Powerpuff Girl Villain when Mojo Jojo takes on arguably the creepiest villain if you've ever asked me. Him. Mojo Jojo I don't know about any of you, but that guy gave me the creeps back in the day. You have no idea. Nonetheless, we are taking on the mighty him. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say about him. I think it's interesting that we end this with a cartoon, I mean, not a cartoon network. Well, they both are from Cartoon Network. But a Powerpuff Girl taking on a Powerpuff Girl in the battle for supremacy. Him, arguably, in my opinion, was the second most popular, um, Cartoon Network villain. I mean, not Cartoon Network villain, a uh, Powerpuff Girl villain. And... It's very strange how you have number one and number two facing off right here. And him's a playable character. I wonder who um who you face if you if you play as him. But nonetheless, that's that's for another time when we finally do him's arcade playthrough. But uh, yeah, do that for me, nerds and geeks, if you could. Uh, if you can think of any other cartoon crossovers, and I mean just you know let's tr let's leave it to. Cr I mean, if you feel like it, I guess. But um, I might not know it. Uh, and I don't count, like, Grim and the... Oh, Mojo Jojo completed the blueprints for a rocket ship that would take him back to Townsville with his ego inflated. From defeating so many enemies in these new worlds, Mojo raised his arms in victory just as a powerful gust of wind swiped the drawing off the spaceship from his hand, carrying it off miles and miles away. Mojo fell to his knees and shouted, No! Miles and miles away, a black boot accidentally stepped on the blueprints. Of the ship reaching down to pick it up, Dexter, boy genius, was struck with a brilliant idea. That was weird. Hey, Mojo Jojo, have proven but, um, that's the end of this part, nerds and geeks. Stay tuned, and we're going to show you some alternate costumes. That should always be fun, right? Well, nerds and geeks, this is Mojo Jojo's alternate costume in the game. He simply does not have his little brain protector on. That's what he looks like without the thing. There's his brain. It's gigantic and gets bigger than most people. His standalone X, he shoots some laser. His side X, he does some weird little flying thing. Down X, he throws chemicals at you. And up X, he does a little rocket shoe thing. But, Nerds and Geeks, that is the end of this arcade, pl arcade, arcade playthrough of Mojo Jojo. I have an OMG WTF LOL FTW BRB, and I'll see you next time we do one of these. So until then, Nerds and Geeks, you guys have a great day.